What's up traders? It's Robert Falco from Real Life Trading here with Jeremy Alexander Newsom. This is your Wednesday stock review. Hey traders from around the world. Yes, it is your Wednesday Real Life Stock Review. And yes, the markets are down a lot, mostly because of the uncertainty coming up, right? We don't know who the president's going to be, although it will be a white male above the age of 60. <laughs> One of those two will definitely be president in the next two, three weeks. So we have that uncertainty, coronavirus, is it coming back? Is it gonna take over the world again? Is the world gonna shut down? We don't know. Is there gonna be a stimulus? When will there be a stimulus? How much? All the information is causing uncertainty and therefore we are going lower. Which again, makes a lot of sense. You all know we went to cash on the 2nd of September and then also had a lot of targets get hit on the 12th of October. So this pullback is nice, it is good and I like it. I do think ultimately worst case scenario, sure, we can make it all the way down into this 290 area. That'd be a lot of fun. But it does make sense to me that if we get something like this, we trade down to the 200, which we've never actually bounced off of before, it'd be a very, very strange thing to come down there and bounce. That could happen into the election because a lot of people would think it would be a double top. A lot of shorts would come in and then we see something like that. Also plausible, most likely my scenario that I'm watching and keeping a very close eye on in the broader market. So the SPY and the broader markets, yeah, they're definitely down strong gap and it seems like we're gonna keep slowly grinding lower throughout the rest of the day. So I hope you do have some hedges out there. The RLT gang has a lot of uh, some shares of SPSX. That's one of our main hedges uh, out there. Uh, we, instead of having puts, just wanted to do shares of the SPSX, just makes the most sense, at least for now, to do that. So have some hedges, be in some protection just in case the market volatility is not over. Gonna be a lot of fun for day trades. Although, believe it or not, I did set up a few day trades today, but I did not get triggered into any. Uh, Bed Bath & Beyond was my main focus to short and just missed this one a few times by a few pennies. No big deal. Uh, just didn't get a quick chance to short it, but that one was really nice. Tupperware, you'll be proud to know that I did not short Tupperware today. I learned that lesson back on the 29th of July last time I was in Vegas. And Tupperware, we had a few traders make some good money on Tupperware going bullish because it's a very nice bullish gap, clearing tons of pivots, trapping tons of short traders. And hey, let's be honest, a lot of people are gonna be using Tupperware. Apparently Tupperware, Yeti Cups, and Peloton. That's the only thing that people like these days. <laughs> Those are all some stocks that are higher and energy just continues to get absolutely shredded to bits. Exxon is down tremendously. British Petroleum, I mean, who needs oil? It is really, really cataclysmically bearish out there on energy land. So if you are looking at playing some stocks and they are oil related, be extremely cautious. Although, although some bottoming is very, very close to happening on energies, I think, and at least some slowdown. I'm not personally playing any energy companies right now, but if I do, it'll be for some very short, quick trades. Let's look at the stocks that were requested by the YouTube audience and Overstock is the first one. Overstock earnings right around the corner. So if you do have some positions on Overstock, my opinion, I would have a protection specifically below 63. Some type of long put to protect your shares if Overstock gaps down. Obviously, if you're in it and it gaps up, hooray. But the problem is Overstock has formed a pattern just like this before. And when I mean just like this, I mean just like this. Here was the run up in 2017, and then you had the big sell off, and then the higher move, and then the lower high was formed, and then blah. So again, one of the biggest run ups in COVID, uh, up 3,000%, insane run up, massive drop, potentially lower high, and then maybe it rolls over again. So again, if we zoom out, this is, this is it happened over here, it happened over here, it happened over here, it happened over here, it, it's happened before. So could it happen again? Absolutely, I don't have any position in overstock, but just be cautious. If it does gap up, phenomenal, but if it gaps down, uh, make sure you have some protection. Speaking of gapping down, I know there's a lot of traders out there in Teladoc, and congrats. So I did buy some more on Monday off of the blue line. Up pretty big on Teladoc, and do have a large position in this one. So I am getting into a collar, 260, November 6th, call sales and a protective put at 210 for this Friday, just in case Teladoc does report earnings that are not amazing and we gap down big because there will be some serious bulls trapped if Teladoc does gap down 
And yeah, that wouldn't be phenomenal, but at least it'd have some protection. And then I'd look to buy more at 180 if that is indeed what happens, right? Remember, Teladoc uh, is buying in cash and shares LVGO and LVGO also reporting earnings. So both of those big news to watch for tonight on those companies. First Solar, got lucky with First Solar. A lot of you know that I'm in First Solar bullish and was pleased to see it gap up today. I really did like the gap specifically since this has a 10% short float and the market was down and First Solar was gapping up. We have two days left for the month of October to close. And if we close like this on the month, my expectation would be potentially a retest into 80 on First Solar. But this does look like a breakout of a channel. Buy the dip at this point on FSLR. All time frames point to the north on this one. Also had a request for IBM, which is International Business Machines, and it's tanking. Uh, a gap down on earnings, it is just getting absolutely slaughtered along with Intel. So some of the bigger name companies, you know, the large, large chip stocks that have been around for a while, IBM has just always had a lot of weakness in my personal opinion. That one has been relatively weak along with Intel after earnings trading down into really pretty sizable support, but it just keeps getting battered over the head with the sh with the selling. Now, keep in mind, you are at COVID lows on Intel. And I don't think Intel is just gonna go to zero, personally, but I don't have any position in it right now. Earnings, you had a massive gap down on earnings, really nice little candle, started just getting absolutely hosed, and dividends are coming up around the corner. So if you're looking at buying Intel, this would be the spot. I would just simply do it with a long-term perspective in mind, or a very, very, very short-term perspective. So trying to catch a move like this, or you know, wait for something like that. Uh, it'll be ugly, it won't be pretty, it could take easily six or seven months, but Intel is at a really good support if you're looking at buying it, although the chart does look pretty miserable. All right, had a request for WDC, Western Digital, and this one is only being held up on the monthly adjusted for dividends chart. So you gotta really dig to find the support on this one. And you are here, the 200 simple on a monthly, if you adjust it for dividends, that's where we're at. So if you're buying, this is where, and you can have a pretty decent risk reward ratio because your protective puts on Western Digital most likely are 37 and below. So if you do own some shares and you're gonna be in some shares long-term, earnings on this one are also around the corner. I would own some protective puts if I was in the shares of this thing just in case it keeps slipping on that banana peel that a lot of these stocks are slipping on. Dave & Buster's, well, no one's really going to play games, even though it's open. I like Dave & Buster's. Alcohol and arcades, <laughs> what can go wrong? But really, really good support back at 15 and 16 level. We are down here. It's just been hit hard during COVID and it will continue to get hit hard during the whole COVID situation. So buy as low as you possibly can and be as patient as you possibly can on Dave & Buster's. For me, I wouldn't look to buy anything until it gets around to the $15 or $14 price range. And again, I would tiptoe into this one. I wouldn't have any immaculately large size in play. And let's look at four more. Uh, Momo, M-O-M-O. -O. So Momo, I agree. This does look like a nice breakout. You got a good close, you got a good candle, you got a good volume, possible triple bottom. Now the chart pattern says maybe this reverses and the stock is just, you know, getting pretty much blistered down here at $16. So no moving averages. The chart trend is like a strong maybe. So the best thing that we have is this daily chart that says, yeah, possibly we go higher. So if we break above this candle, the stop down here, that could be a trade that we take. In fact, I'll throw it on the list for, what day is today, Wednesday? Yeah, let's put it on there for Energy Wednesday in the afternoon swing trading room, Momo. See if we can break above that candle and maybe get in bullish. Other than that, that's really all I see on Momo. And then AMD, the talk of the town. I'm still waiting for AMD to come down into this level, my friends, 72. If you wanna be a buyer of AMD, wait till be a buyer down there. Earnings were. Uh, they came out a little bit early. They were good, but AMD is sinking meh, along with the rest of the market. So if you're looking at playing AMD, just wait until the $72-ish price range. If you are selling puts at 70, cool, right? Buy low, sell high on AMD. Worst case scenario, at some point, if AMD gets back down to 62-ish, uh, pull up the boat and decide to get in. 
Buy low, sell high on AMD for sure. I do like the overall trend. I like the overall company. I like the fundamentals. I like the technical charts. I like the volume. I like the breakouts. I kind of like all of it, but it is high and it does need a little bit of a pullback. So that's pretty much it. Uh, specifically since AMD did at least announce that they're buying Z-Links. So far, Z-Links keeps selling off. Mm. So it's going to be interesting to see. I mean, the deal was inked, allegedly. Again, according to this chart, it doesn't look like it's inked. But Z-Links, if it's getting bought out by AMD, that would make AMD even stronger, in my opinion, longer term, especially fundamentally. And last but not least is Tesla. So Tesla, yep, definitely trading sideways, still leaking a little bit. About to come into this 50 EMA as a really good support for another opportunity to see if it can bounce there. Truth of the matter is Tesla is just really, really high and it needs to rest. I am in Tesla. Uh, I am losing on Tesla, at least the options. Shares are kind of break even right now for the most part, but we're just trading sideways. It's gonna be sideways for a bit, higher lows, lower highs. We're gonna trade and hang out in here for a while. And then I think eventually break out and go higher. We are in a Bollinger Band squeeze on Tesla, which is rare. That is a rare event. So eventually, if we can get back into the top band and we can break out like we did back in August, expect this bad boy to run. But until then, it's going to hang out and do a whole lot of nothing for right now. Anyway, that's my review for today. Thanks for tuning in. On Friday, I will be back for a trade review or another video that we decide is awesome for the viewers. Thanks so much for being a subscriber. Thank you for watching this video. And until next time, love life, love life, and trade. Bye. All right, simply put, that was your Wednesday stock review. Thanks for watching. You are a wonderful person.